eight prides live here, and in the Big Kings, the largest pride of all, there's a lion that needs an urgent operation. Hello, Rafik. Come lie down here, my boy. Come lie down here. Five-year-old Rafiki has spent his life with an ungainly saunter, and it's getting worse. He has an extra dew claw on both of his hind legs that shouldn't be there. They are a deformity and need to be amputated. Vet Jonathan Fish has been called out to remove them. I think you've seen it before. The dew claws. Yeah, but his ones are not as integral. They're not as attached. They, they're kind of like just hanging on by a thread of skin. Yeah. And when he walks around, it just flops around, you know. Dew claws are normally only found on the front legs of a lion, not the back. They act like thumbs and are used to hunt and hold down prey while lions eat. But Kevin is worried Rafiki's redundant dew claws could be accidentally torn off with the risk of serious infection. And by removing them, he hopes it will help the ungainly lion to walk properly. Before the operation, Rafiki needs to be anesthetized. So I think what I'll do is I'll just uh, entice him with some pieces of meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rafik. Rafiki, Rafiki. Yeah. They use a pole syringe to inject him with the sedative. Yeah. Willie, I'm going to just time it. Leave you alone. Okay, okay. Leave him alone. Let's go, let's go. Anesthetizing a lion is risky. The dose is difficult to judge. Too much, and his heart could stop. Too little, and he could wake up early. Yeah, quite a hard dose. Yeah, he's going down like a ton of bricks. Is okay? Yeah. One, two, three, cut. Once he's safely sedated, Jonathan needs to work quickly. Right, so I'm going to cut through the skin first. Oh. There's some major blood vessels under there. No, there's a big blood vessel that supplies the skin. Yeah. And there's a big one that supplies the claw itself. I mean, if you can imagine having that attached to your leg yeah. and walking around with that, it must be highly irritating. No special technique there, you just... <laughs> Short of that, huh? They check to make sure Rafiki's not showing any signs of the anesthetic wearing off. If he wakes up early, he could attack them. They remove the second claw and stitch the wound. Um, the problem with the lions are they all, their tongues are very, very rough, and they pull stitches off quite easily. To avoid this, Jonathan uses internal stitches that he hopes will keep the wound closed while it heals. What a difference, eh? Look at that. There you go. You look like a normal lion, my boy. You're going to be so thankful. With the operation over, Rafiki is left to recover. Just getting comfortable. Yeah. They now need to make sure the wounds don't reopen and become infected. A few hours after the operation, and with Rafiki just about on all four feet again, he's released back into the big king's pride. Probably got a huge headache. So Rafiki's just come out and he's actually just trying to find some peace and quiet. <laughs> he's gone to a spot in the shade and the youngsters keep pestering him. All the adults couldn't really be bothered. They've understood what's going on, I think. They've said, okay, leave him alone, he looks a bit grumpy, but not the youngsters. They are curious about these bandages and the smell of these bandages, and they keep on harassing him, and he, he's getting up and, and giving them a good beating and then going back down. Kevin originally helped to set up the kingdom in 2005 for the production of a fictional movie following the story of a white lion. 
The retired stars of the film now live out their days here, alongside some of Kevin's favorite lions from his former job at another lion park. The feeding of the animals, vets' bills, and general maintenance cost up to $20,000 a month, all paid for by a private investor. But now the funding is running low, and Kevin needs to find a way for the park to become self-sufficient. If he can't, all the animals could be sold. I've made a promise to them, I made a commitment to them. So at the first hurdle, I'm not going to waver and just throw in the towel. It's far too easy. For Kevin, finding a way for the kingdom to contribute to the conservation of lions is crucial. One day he hopes to open it to the public and give educational tours. It's the day after Big King Rafiki's operation, and Kevin heads over to check up on him. The cubs have tried their best to pull off Rafiki's bandages, but with no luck. There we go. There we go. Now, you can have some now they do need to be removed. Kevin has two choices. Put the lion through another risky anesthetic. It's all flop on each other. Or chance taking the bandages off himself. Kevin's insight into the pride dynamics is crucial in judging the right time. Pick the wrong moment, and he will be at the mercy of over 210 kilograms of angry lion. He's in a much better mood. He's recovered quite well. And he's a lot less grumpy than he was yesterday. Eh? And I think, well, he's in a great mood. I'm going to try and take his bandages off. If I can cut through the whole length of it, he'll be able to pull it off himself. One of the really cool things about having a relationship with a lion is that if there's anything that you need to look at or inspect, it's quite easy to do it without having to put them under. I can look at a little wound, I can say, okay, well that doesn't really need any treatment. I can try and get the bandages off his paw, then have to re-knock uh, him out again. That flicking, it's, I'm really irritated with you. Okay, got it. With Rafiki on the road to recovery, no one is prepared for the shocking events about to unfold in another lion pride. The next morning brings heartbreaking news. Lion cub Vietzi is alone and distressed in his enclosure. There's been a tragic discovery. The dead body of Vietzi's best friend, Mufumu. Vietzi, who grew up with Mufumu, is now desperately craving attention. For the last five weeks, the two cubs had lived in a pride with three older lions, Tristan, Zippo, and Nash, following their successful introduction. Um, yeah, when I got here, all the lions were around Mufumo's body. And uh, what was quite disturbing is when I got there is that um, his um, the stomach area had been opened up. So it looked like they had been feeding on him. Yesterday, he seemed fine um, just before I went, I went home. So he, wasn't, he definitely wasn't sick. But he's, he's a little bit scared, but um, I've just phoned Kevin as well to let him know what has happened and uh, he's uh, on his way here. The discovery is a shock. Rodney fears the three older lions may have attacked and killed Cub Mufumu. For Vietzi's safety, they've been separated and put in another enclosure. 
As soon as Kevin arrives, it's vital they determine how Mafumu died and whether the older lions were responsible. After hearing the terrible news of Cub Mafumu's death, Kevin has rushed to the kingdom. He wants to know if there are any clues that may reveal if the cub was killed by the older lions, Tristan, Zippo, and Nash. Although Mafumu and Vietzi had lived apparently happily with the pride for over a month, introducing new lions always carries a risk. Even if it's done as carefully as possible, violent attacks can still happen. There's no evidence to suggest a fight, eh? If he was in a fight, anyway, they're going to kill this guy in the neck immediately, a, a mm. suffocating bite. Mm. Mm. While the others rip him apart. Mm. If you look here, there's absolutely no puncture wounds. No, there's nothing. Nothing in the neck. On his back legs, where they normally bite them, nothing. When lions attack, they claw and bite their prey from behind, pulling it to the ground. A suffocating bite then closes the victim's airways. On the neck, on the face, look at his face. Yeah. His face is perfect. There's not even a mark on his face. And the other thing that's not adding up is that, you know, when, you, when I got the call, I, I immediately had, uh, thought to buy Etsy. Immediately mm. thought this is Vietti's being killed. Mm. If it was to, an altercation with them, because this guy was more confident, he was more sociable. Vietti was a little bit more skittish and, and, and a little bit more terrified, you know. And they mm. obviously hone in on that kind of, wow. you know. You know what I'm thinking? Mm. Tongue does look a bit swollen. I'm thinking Pafeda. Tongue swells up, you can't breathe. The puff adder is a highly venomous snake. One bite on the throat could be enough to asphyxiate a young lion. And that's what Kevin believes happened to Mafumu. Don't even know what to say. I think what we need to do is maybe today just bury the body. No. It's likely that once Mafumu died, the older lions began to investigate the carcass and tear it open. The truth be known is that it does happen. Uh, it happens in the wild and it does happen in captivity too. But if an animal does die, sometimes, you know, they, they do tuck into it and they do start to consume it. And sometimes once their carcass opens up, a kind of like feeding instinct and frenzy takes over. Later that day, Mafumu is laid to rest in one of the kingdom's most peaceful areas. Okay, it's going to Kevin is now faced with a dilemma what to do about the remaining cub, Vietzi. As a precaution, for now, he'll have to live on his own. We can kind of